Hi everybody, it's Brandon from Soundwell Guitar. In today's video I'm going to be talking about applying the most fundamental technique on the guitar using a pick. Okay, as I said, it's going to be a fundamental technique about the most basic thing that you can do on the instrument, but very important if you've never played guitar before. So if you haven't played guitar before and this is your first lesson, this is a good video for you. We're just simply going to try to affect a tone on the instrument using proper technique with both right and left hand. But I'm also going to show you how to convey these ideas on paper so that way others can be written, read, whatever in the future you need to recall and just pull it off the printed page or write it down yourself. Okay, we'll get started. First, we'll talk about the pick. The pick, most of it, is really meant for gripping between the thumb and the index finger. You don't want to grip it tight, nor do you want to grip it too loose. In fact, when I'm holding it, this is about how hard I'm going to hold on to it, and I can still slightly pull it from my finger, so it should give you some idea. I'm not squeezing it super hard. Okay. The other thing about the pick, too, is the tip. That's the part that comes in contact with the string, makes the sound. Um, again, like I said, very basic information, but important. Try to think of the pick as like a pencil. We hold the pencil close to the tip, and our penmanship is, is clear. If we were to hold a pencil far back like this, it's much harder to control. It still works, but it's not really the best way to do it. The pick is the same way. Getting close to the tip gives us stability and it's going to affect probably the strongest tone off of the string when you pluck it. Okay, so we've already established it plucks the strings, makes sound. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the direction the pick goes in to start today. Why don't we just focus on the pick going down? Just down, aim for the floor. Let's not do up, just do down. And we're going to focus on controlling that motion while our left hand affects notes over here. This is known as the neck or the fretboard. You know, it's wood with metal pieces embedded into it. The metal pieces are known as frets. Within each fret is a segment of the neck that has been designed to create a different pitch. We're going to work on the first five that are in this location at the bottom of the neck and also utilizing the note that the guitar produces without fretting the notes at all. Now this exercise is going to be very simple. In fact, it's so simple, you don't even have to worry about your guitar being in tune to do it. It's just about using proper technique, doing it the right way, and getting comfortable playing the instrument and holding it. Speaking of holding it, as you can see, I'm using a solid body electric guitar today. You could do this exercise on any style of guitar, whether it be classical or acoustic doesn't matter. The leg that I've got it on right now is my right leg. If you prefer to be on the left leg, that's proper as well. There's really no right or wrong way in that case, it's what you're more comfortable with. We'll get more into that later on reasons why I might choose the left leg over the right, but for now I'm going to use the right leg. This little curve right here fits right over my leg perfectly. Notice I'm not using my left hand to hold up the headstock either. Pardon me. $10 words here. Headstock, I'm referring to this portion of the guitar, the thing with these little tuning heads on it. Okay, you can see I'm not using my left hand to hold up the guitar. The stability of it really comes from the weight of my arm over here. That way this hand is free to just move across the strings and frets and not worry about holding it up. Okay, well let's begin with our first exercise. Again, we're going to work with five notes. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. That's five. You can see my fingers just lined right up in the frets there. We've got fret one, fret two, fret three, fret four. And the fingers are numbered the same way. Finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four. Our exercise is very basic. Again, all downstrokes with the, with the pick. And we'll just play those notes one at a time. Notice I'm using the extreme tips of my fingers when they come in contact with the strings, just the tip. 
not the flat part here, not putting your whole finger across it like that, but just really getting your tip right in there. Now, why this exercise is so beneficial is that it's training our hands to work together to get the strongest note possible, but also utilizing all four fingers. You might be wondering, well, why don't I just do that with one finger? The answer is pretty simple. It's about economy of movement and efficiency. Often uh, with my students, I'll describe the guitar as like a, like a big, more sophisticated video game controller. Most of my younger students play video games and can appreciate how when they're playing Xbox or PlayStation, their controller is designed to have multiple fingers ready to go on the buttons. Now imagine trying to play that controller with one finger, you're gonna lose the game. So this is the same kind of principle. We're going to utilize all four of these fingers with our thumb behind the neck. Again, not playing with one finger. We're gonna to try to work on doing all four and each gets its own fret. So I've played the exercise once already. What I wanna do next is go into it note by note and show you what it would look like on paper. I'm gonna write the first note of this exercise down right now. As you can see, I wrote a zero on a top line of a series of six. Actually, you can probably see more lines on there because, well, there's three segments of six. But each segment of six lines is meant to look like a guitar. Very basic, it's not a detailed diagram, but it's at least enough to get us by. We are to view these lines as strings. There are six strings on the guitar, there's six lines to our system here. The system is known as tablature, short for tab. It's a very quick and easy way to convey guitar ideas on paper. Uh, it's actually pretty old too. Uh, it started in the 16th century, so it's not a new thing. All musical ideas typically, when we try to chart them out on paper, the lower notes are lower on the paper, and then the higher notes are higher on the paper. So I drew a zero on the highest line on our tab system here. Okay, well, that system works really well when you consider that our highest string is that one and our lowest is this. It's easy to keep them straight. Again, lower notes written lower, higher notes written higher. This can be confusing for some at first because the top line, they'd almost think it's this string, the big one, because they're looking at it and they think it's like a mirrored image of the guitar. But it's really not. Again, most musical concepts, they put the lower notes lower and the higher notes higher. This string is higher than that string. There's another way you could look at it too. It's sort of a first person perspective diagram because when you're looking down at the guitar, you actually see it upside down, much like it's written there in the tab. Okay, when we move on to the next fret, we line up our first finger with the first fret. We want to get as close to the fret as possible, never on the fret. The common terminology when somebody says, oh, I'm fretting a note on the guitar, they'll say, oh, I'm on fret one. And that's proper terminology, but it's not literal. We're not literally on the fret because it would sound like that. Furthermore, if we're too far behind the fret, it sounds like that. So be sure that you're close enough to the fret and getting the truest sound possible. Okay, so then our next note in the exercise was in fact first fret, and this would be conveyed on the paper by writing a one on that line representing the first string. I'm gonna write that down for you. There's our second note in the exercise. We've ever open, then our one. I'd like to think at this point now that the system is pretty clear and how we're going to do it, so I'm just going to finish writing that whole exercise down for you. There you have it. Our first exercise in just some very basic technique using a pick. Open 
Now exercises are to be done in reps, just like physical exercise, push-ups, sit-ups, whatever. You don't just do one, you do several. So you can always commit to doing this exercise in maybe five, 10 reps. And if even that speed might be too fast, there's no shame in doing something more like that. Whatever speed you're comfortable with, where you're getting the best possible tone and that your hands aren't um, going out of phase with each other. That sound, a lot of times when people practice, they go too fast and then the two hands aren't working together anymore and it kind of sounds like this. Like that. Um, you want something very smooth and clear. All right, now that we've established how to play on this one string and use the pick, the tips of our fingers, fretting it correctly, we know how to write it down and read it. I'm going to write a few more exercises on there for you and then we'll be done. Okay, the second exercise that I've written down here is a pattern of one, four, two, and four. I want to talk a little bit about the technique that goes into playing that. Even though it's a shorter pattern, there's some subtleties that you want to keep in mind. You see, when I was playing the first one, you might have noticed I didn't lift my fingers up as the notes got higher. This is actually a pretty good idea because it's not necessary to lift them. A lot of times people at first might want to do something like this where they're lifting the fingers. But that's giving it kind of a punchy sound. It doesn't really ring out. Okay. So this whole leaving the fingers down on the lower notes as we get higher and then releasing them as we go down is a really good way to go as far as technique goes. And our next exercise is no different, but it seems to really benefit a beginner player when they realize that when the exercise loops, when you're doing your reps, in the loop, I come back to the first fret every time. So this is much more efficient that I've left the one down, that is my first finger on the first fret, and stretched for the note that I needed. The tendency oftentimes would be, if one wasn't very experienced at this, would be to hit the first note and then sort of shift their hand upward to get to the next note and then back again. And then, well, look how crazy this looks. Not to mention how bad it sounds. But if we leave that first finger anchored, it sounds better, it's more efficient, and we're also getting the benef full, benefit, full benefit of the exercise. We're getting that stretch in there between the one and the four. All right, I'm gonna write down another exercise. All right, this time we're just doing a different pattern, one, four, three, four. I'm gonna go through this one really quickly because it's almost exactly like the previous one. We just sw swapped out the second, uh, second finger for the third. One, four, three, four. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, last exercise for today. Zero, four, one, four, two, four, three, four, two, four. One, four. It looks pretty long and crazy, but you can see that it keeps going back to the four and then working up with the one and the two and the three. It sounds like this. Okay, so what to do with these? Practice them every day. And practicing every day is really the key. It's not about putting hours in to get it down. Say like some people say, well, I might not have a lot of time during the week, so I'll run through these on the weekend, maybe put in a couple of hours. It really is benefi more beneficial if you're doing them every day and then just committing to a small amount of time that's more realistic, that won't interfere with whatever you have going on during the week. Because the key is daily, reinforcing these ideas. Now, it honestly only takes about, what, a minute to run through these if you do like five reps of each, two minutes. If you committed to just 10 minutes a day, I promise you, you'd get results. Think of it as like brushing your teeth. 
You know, you don't go the whole week without brushing your teeth and then say, well, I'm going to brush my teeth for five hours on the weekend. No, you just do it every day, and it really only takes about 30 seconds, a minute. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's going to be more to come. We'll see you next time.